www.bradshawmedia.com under trading newsletters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 26th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? And let's have an extraordinary weekend. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. And, of course, life is going to toss those at us. But today, right now, right here and now, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, we take any and all pings out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, pretty flat market. The uh, Dow's up nine. The S&P is up two. The Nasdaq 100 is off four tenths of a percent. That's 32 points to the downside. The Russell is up 11 points. That's seven tenths of a percent to the downside. The semis are off one and six tenths percent. That's 25 bucks. So we've got mixed markets out here. Spot volatility is down 40 cents. Trade out at 12.85. Gold's up ten dollars in change. That's eight tenths of a percent. While silver is up nearly one full percent. Point that's 14 pennies. Lightsweet crude is off two dollars and 51 cents. If you are long lightsweet crude, do not sell it. What do you mean, Stevo? That is a four percent move to the downside. You're right, but downside to where? So if we take a look at lightsweet crude, you can see the one big move here that has taken place. And what you have, what you have, this the wind at your back may be the bottom of its weekly profile. And that number is 6208. The low so far today is 6228. So price has pulled back to support. We don't know if support will fail. What we do know at 109 in the afternoon is support has held. So if you have taken a bit of a hit, that's okay. Don't sell it. Adjust your stop. You don't want to see a close below 6208. If there's a close below 6208 today, well, then that's a different story. Then a uh, trend, you can say, will have broken both the daily and the weekly from a profile perspective. But from that perspective, all that we've seen so far is a pullback in light sweet crude that is testing support. Lean the charge, the upside. You've got Helen of Troy. That's up 23 buckaroonies or 20%. Amazon up 21 bucks. Lending Tree is up 5% or nearly 20 bucks as well. Align Technology about 6% or 16 bucks. To the downside, it's into it. INTU is the ticker symbol 6% or $15 and change. Tesla is down 13 bucks. Sounds like Tesla has broken through that level of support that uh, Ron and I were looking at yesterday. Let's just take a quick peek out here, TSLA. And so Ron was looking at, so Ron, that, uh, I don't know if it was, no, yesterday it looks like it held, but today it has broken through that uh, consolidation out there. And uh, assuming this is a, a, not a false breakout here, so this is really interesting, right? So when you have a consolidation pattern, let me, let me grab the actual size of the consolidation. I'm just going to make it. Oh, it's easier. I'm just going to copy this box. So let me copy and paste it. Move one of them. There we go. So 
the measured move inside of Tesla, this is not the first place I would be looking at for price to stop. But if this is a real break of the consolidation, remember it's a weekly chart, and it's been consolidating since uh, – February of 2016, so over a year, the bottom, the measure move of the consolidation gets you down to 113. That's almost a, uh, it's almost another, uh, uh, that is a, that is another 50% haircut from where it's trading right now. The first target on uh, Tesla would have been the February 27, 2017 swing point low, a 242, you're below that. So that really opens up the door to the 178-ish area. Um, so it looks to me like that is where Tesla is headed as we take a look at its weekly break of this consolidation pattern out there. Um, also, uh, moving to the downside, you've got Regenerant Pharmaceuticals off 10 bucks or nearly 3% in the Lumina, down 3% or around 9 So it was a question that came in uh, earlier. And it was with regard to the GDX. And the question went like this. The question said, Steve, gold is now trading above a resistance level that uh, I had shared with uh, everyone yesterday. And that was the top of the profile out here. And remember, in the case of gold, we had that nice little bull sash candle that took place on April 24th, got priced back inside its box, the bottom of which was 1277. And today, right now, at least as of 112 in the afternoon, price is trading above the top of the profile. That's 12 8550 So for all intents and purposes out here, it looks like gold has made a bottom. The next key level of resistance for it, however, is going to be the 1295.10 area. That is the weekly, the weekly bottom of its profile. And old support could be new resistance. But right now, uh, the move in gold looks pretty good. It was nearly an A to B equals CD to the downside. And what I'm referring to there is I'm referring to the swing point high out here on February 20th, the low on March 7th, and again, the retracement or high on March 25th. The exact number been 1262. Did hit that, but got close. So at this stage here, it looks like a bottom in gold. Looks like one, smells like one. <laughs> And if it gets above 1295, 10, it brings 1315 back into play out there. But the question was, okay, since gold is above that, then what do you think of the GDX? What do you do here? So in the case of the GDX, the GDX, thus far we can say made a TD setup nine count bottom. And uh, right now, and so the question is, and it's trading above uh, so it's in a bullish structured profile. The top of that box is 2219. You can see the bottom 2084, the center 2101. It's trading above that. It's inside the box. If now here's the this is the this is the big if out here. Gold and the GDX do not have the same pattern. If you take a look at Stevie's green line, which turned to red uh, quite a few trading sessions ago, specifically on the trading day of April the 18th out there, when that changes colors, what it tells us is that we should see price and Stevie's red line catch up to each other. Well, the high today so far inside the GDX has been 21.43, seven pennies below Stevie's red line. So here's my suggestion. If you're not in, don't get in right now. Wait for this last test in the GDX. Wait for price to close above Stevie's red line. That number is 21.50. If this is bullish, it should have no problem doing so. Hitting and rejecting that? Yeah, then we have to go back to the laboratory to figure out what's going on. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Phil wrote in, and he's having trouble seeing the right-hand side of my screen. So, uh, Phil, the, the uh, production room is checking into it, but our uh, our guys and gals in the den say they can see the charts okay. So, uh, not sure what is going on there, but uh, we'll see if there's anything else that uh, might be on our end on the Tiger TV side of uh, biz. But uh, so let's go. Let's continue taking a look at the markets out here. So, kind of interesting. And what I want to do. Um, with this uh, next uh, few minutes out here is take a look at each of the uh, indices uh, on a daily basis, the daily time frame chart. So we start with the composite because there are many that are uh, that are displaying uh, topping signals. Now, one that is not is a NASDAQ composite. I don't I, I have it in wave number six out here. That's not really a topping signal, not the kind that uh, not that it can't be, but it's not the one that I would be looking for. Uh, it has uh, there's no uh, set up nine count. Um, you know, there's just A to B equals CD pattern. There's no bearish reversal signal. Price of low Stevie's green line. That just means, okay, could be a retracement, but no top inside the NASDAQ composite. Okay. So that if we take a look at the uh, eight or nine of the indices, we got one that says, okay, bullish. If we take a look at the semiconductor, that's not the case. It's given us that, um, it's given us that topping pattern. That was the setup nine count. It uh, topped on uh, two days ago on count number eight oftentimes it's either eight nine or the following day out there this also happens to be singing in the key of g that is the uh, seventh wave of the chapman wave out there and uh, so that's letter g and then we had a nice bearish reversal candle yesterday the old bear sash candle slight close below stevie's below stevie's green line today a gap to the downside a second bearish candle out here this suggests that the semis whether they've topped or this is just a pullback to support that we don't know but probably support is where the semis are headed to and the first level of support is going to be the april 15th low and that's 1477.45 the second level of support would be all the way back to the march 29th area and that's at 1386 so uh now we've got a uh, indice on a daily time frame chart that's got a uh, topping signal if we take a look at the transports the transports have created a setup nine count and wave number seven 
They also created a bear sash candle yesterday, price below Stevie's green line. This suggests a pullback to at least 10,601. That is level one of support. Level two that we would use would be 10,195. So now we've got two out of three that has given us a topping signal. Let's take a look at the uh, Wilshire 5000. What do we have in the Wilshire? We've got wave number seven. That's letter number G. That uh, letter number G is coming off of the trading session that count from March 26 out here. Now, what it doesn't have is some type of bearish reversal candle. So it makes it somewhat questionable. And uh, price is trading with inside the uh, the body of the candle from April 24th. And it's going to be day number three. After day number three, if there is a close above, and I'll use the conservative, that's going to be the high of uh, April 24th. That's at 33.23. That becomes a rising three uh, Japanese bullish candle out there. Um, and uh, so uh, it's got a topping pattern. But it, it just hasn't given us any kind of real confirmation just yet. So this one is kind of in the neutral category out here. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, wave number seven from two different swing points out there, that doesn't make it more powerful. It just makes it more interesting. And uh, this did generate that bearish reversal signal out here. So a topping signal inside the New York Stock Exchange. Now, it's pullback area uh, could take price down to 12.55.83. That would be the first level of support. The NDX 100, unlike the NASDAQ composite, did form a TD setup nine count yesterday. It happened to top on the bar after bar nine. Right now it's labeled number one. Price is trading below Stevie's green line, but here again, no bearish reversal signal. But if price does continue to pull back, we'll call it a retracement, 75.78 would become its first level of support. But what this is not showing us is that the NDX is ready to run to the upside out here. The Russell 2000, it's just trading in a consolidation pattern, even though I don't have that drawn in here on the cash indice. We do in the futures uh, market. So that in itself is a topping-ish type signal out there. If we take a look at the Dow Jones, what we're going to see is that uh, this has formed a Rhodes Momentum indicator top. It did that yesterday when price gapped to the downside. Gaps are our friends. This is how markets communicate with us out here. So inside the Dow Jones, it has a topping signal. Now, it would take us all the way back if, in fact, this is going to play out. All the way back to the February 12th low becomes support number one, and that is at 25,152. But the bonus here inside the transports, uh, as in the case of the NQ and the ES and the Russell, uh, is that we have profiles that we can use out there. And we'll, we'll get to those. Let me just finish this off for you by taking a look at the S&P 500. Now, in the case of the S&P 500, no topping pattern here. None whatsoever. So uh, we've got a few of the indices that are not participating just yet with regard to topping signals. But we have many that are. We have many that are, I repeat. So kind of interesting out here. So what does all that mean? Well, let's go take a look at the uh, daily equity futures contracts. What you're going to see here, even though it may be hard to see, so some of you will just have to trust me out here, uh, is that we have new profiles inside the daily on the ES, the NQ, and the Dow out here. Now, the one that is most important, let me do it this way, make it a little bit easier for you to see, is the Dow, or I believe it's the Dow. Now, one of the beauties here, of, uh, just like you and I looked at with regard to LightSweet Crew. Now, in this case here, we're just looking at the daily profiles. In the case of the daily profiles, what you will notice is any retracements that we have had along the way off of the December 26 low have pulled back and found support at the bottom of those profiles. That is where support is. That is where buyers are. Until we see those buyers overrun, we have to assume. Well, you don't have to assume anything. I'm going to assume, because I know this to be the case, that that is where they are present, just as in yesterday's case because price tested, was trading below the bottom of that profile, but it's a daily time frame chart, and therefore you and I want to understand what does the end of the day look like? We could give a rat's patootie what it looks like at 125, although we do care. We don't really care 
if you know what I mean, until we get to day's end. Because if at the end of the day it's support is held, well, then support is held. And if we take a look at uh, today, we've seen a test of that level, 26,372. We are trading above that right now. So price could easily bounce to the 26,613 area. And the reason why I want to focus on the Dow is because uh, the if I go back here, the ES Mini is above the top of its new daily profile. The NQ is above the top of its new daily profile. There is nothing bearish about that. And so those of you that are grizzly bears out there, and you think the NQ is the one that could pull us down, yes, the NDX100 has given us a topping pattern, no bearish reversal signal out there. That is different than the NQ. I think somebody was writing, uh, Peter from Park City was saying, hey, yeah, the NQ is a very different candle. So we get back from this break. Let's go see what Peter knows. I'll share that with you, if that's okay with Peter. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 17, S&P about 4, but we're going to go hone in on the NQ out here. And when we take a look at the daily chart for the NQ, what we can see is this too has formed, well, several real tops out there. You've got an A to B equals CD. You can clearly see that drawn. Uh, it's a one-to-one -one price projection with 78.55. It hit that. Um, you also had the uh, setup nine count that occurred uh, yesterday. It looks like that may have been the high. So that's a topping signal. 
out here. And um, so those are two of the uh, patterns that it has uh, completed. And what we had yesterday, Peter, was actually a bearish reversal candle. When you and I were looking at it during the day, um, we were wondering, hey, this is a key reversal session as long as it closes in the red. Well, by the time the session closed, it was a bearish reversal candle as well. Now, so far today, what Price has done is it's it's moved up and it's tested Stevie's green line at the 7824 level and it's rejected that area but it's also traded above the top of its profile which is 7767 so what we are we're kind of like in a uh, this is this is like a tug of war right now so the the NQ the uh, the the sellers have gotten the ball they, they they took they took the ball yesterday with regard to the topping patterns, the bearish reversal signal trading below Stevie's uh, green line, but the uh, the defense in this case here, um, the uh, buyers they're showing some 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 big guns out there because price is trading above the top of that profile that would be resistance out here. So we have we have clear signals but they're mixed. They're just simply mixed. Now, it's a bullish structured profile. And if you could see the NQ close below 77.67, that would be the number you'd be looking at today. Then you should see a, and this would be for traders at this stage, you could see a pullback to 76.82, even 76.26. I'd be more inclined to go with the latter, the bottom of that box, but um, we're not there just yet. But definitely a topping pattern that is uh, that is in place here for the NQ. So whereas the NDX 100 didn't have the bearish reversal signal, the NQ does. Uh, both of them showing topping signals out here, and uh, and that kind of flows into the question that Alex wrote in about, which was he said, hey, you know the NQ is being dragged down by chip stocks, although the the top six stocks represent. 45% of the index, that's Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google. Their weighting structure is about 45% in there. And Alex's question was, Does um, do the chip stocks need to rebound in order for the NQ to get its mojo? And the answer would be no. 45% of the stocks go ahead and lift that thing uh, higher out here. Um, and uh, But, you, you know, you, you now have your clear levels of res I can't say your level of resistance is the high from yesterday. If price gets over that inside the NQ, it's it's on its way. Apple is pulling back a bit out here. Um, you know, the number two weighting. If we just simply take a look at it, AAP, and here's Intel. Now, Intel, by the way, had a just a terrible day uh, today. Uh, volume to the downside so far, 46 million shares. But, hey, here's the deal. And although somebody's going to say, hey, this is volume off for the top, and I'm going to say you're right about that, what I'm also going to share with you is that where prices found support in Intel, very similar to light sweet crude is at the bottom of its weekly profile. And that was 5150. Now the actual low has been 5152. How does that work? So would you jump on board and go short now because there's volume off of the top inside of Intel? Well, Stevie's answer would be no, you would not. Just like in light sweet crude, you would say, okay, you'd have your stop in place. And if you see it close below 5150, that's a different message out here. But right now, from an intermediate term standpoint, uh, what Intel has done is just simply pulled back to a key level of support. And that is the bottom of its uh, profile. Now, I'd mentioned, let's go take a look at Apple, see what it is doing. Uh, it's trading with inside a brand new box that it has formed out here. So as we take a look at it, um, its level of support is going to be 191.06. Um, and similar, but not exactly, but similar uh, to the market, whereas the market, once it got into its profiles, the equity futures market, we never saw a close below the bottom of a box. That was not the case with Apple on March 7th and March 8th out there. But nonetheless, there's nothing bearish here with regard to the Apple chart that we're taking a look at, other than it's just taking a breather. Now, I just want to confirm that in the way that I would confirm that. I would just simply by taking a look at the daily time frame ninja trader charts out here. And I do not have that topping pattern that is in play out here. So at this stage of the game with regard to Apple, just looks like your garden variety pullback inside of it. The Microsoft, which is the number one weighting inside the NDX 100, gap to the upside. 
uh, with its 52-week high, all-time high, I believe, as well, out there today, an inside session. Now, an inside session typically means that price is going to continue in the direction that it came from. So that would be to the upside out here. If we look at Microsoft for some type of topping signal, but well, we don't have it. Even if I drove in A to B equals CD patterns, which is easy to do here, um, uh, the D point of an A to B equals CD never, did I say never? I meant never ends on a wide-ranging bar, which is what yesterday was out there. It was a wide-ranging bar. I know it's kind of hard to see because it was a gap to the upside. That's not how D points are formed. The point you want to see made with small bodied candles, you know, where it's telling you the market is tired than some type of nice reversal signal out here. Now, that doesn't mean that Microsoft doesn't have some things to be concerned about. For example, on the weekly time frame, what it's doing, it's stretching. It's doing the old stretch out here. Price moving higher, doing less relative energy, but only in wave number three. So it looks like it has further to go, even if it does pull back out here. Now, the pullback could be, if it were, because there's no new profile, could be dangeroso because that's 120.43, the top of the box. But we're not seeing it just yet inside of uh, Microsoft. So the answer to your question, Alex, was, you know, do the chips have to turn around in order for the NDX 100 to continue higher? No, but the NDX still shows a topping pattern that is out there so it's going to be interesting to watch but still no break no real breaks of support out there so i hope that that helps you out the next question that came in was from ah shoot let me come back here and get this this is from art and art is asking uh, what's your outlook on jnug and gold in general so art you probably didn't hear the opening um but i'll give you the quick overview at this stage here's the daily time frame chart the daily time frame chart looks good. Price is trading above the top of its profile, 1285.50. Of course, you want to see what it looks like at the end of the day. If gold closes under 1285.50, it's going to make you say, hmm, something to think about. And the reason is, is because, hey, it could still move lower, take out the most recent lows, complete the A to B equals CD pattern, get to wave number seven, letter G, and maybe that's the bottom out here. I don't know. I don't know. Really need to see our, at the end of the day session with regard to gold. Now, you didn't ask about, well, you did ask about gold in general. What I would also share with you, I'll go ahead and I'll throw out this bonus out here and uh, just send in an extra 50 cents, if you would. On a bonus level out here, looks like this is going to be a weekly TD setup nine count for Goldilocks. It could be a bottom. So it's looking more like a bottom out here, but wait till the end of the day. And in order for gold to really say it's been bottom, price would need to close about 1298.60. That's its weekly Stevie Green line number. Right. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So back to gold. Uh, uh, Art was asking, you know, about gold in general and the uh, uh, as well as uh, Jay Nug out there. Uh, so one of the things I would not do out here, Art, if you're, you know, it's 1.42 in the afternoon, you're saying, hey, yeah, I like this moving gold. It's trading above, uh, you know, one of the resistance zones that Stevie's looking at. I think I'll go ahead and add it to my portfolio or do that inside the Jay Nug or the GDX or any of those. And I would say, no, 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 no. Now is not the time. Now, the reason I would say no is not the time is this is the hourly chart here for uh, gold. That happened to be earlier this morning listening in on uh, Larry's show before I had to uh, go run and take care of a few things. And, um, and John, you were asking about the hourly time frame chart. And I had mentioned to you, I had thrown in there that uh, gold was in wave number seven on that hourly chart. Now, it looks like wave number seven on the hourly chart uh, is now going to be confirmed at 2 o'clock. It's 1.43. Um, you know, obviously things can change in the next uh, 17 minutes out here, but assuming they don't, we'll get that seventh wave move top. You've got a bearish engulfing candle. You've got your uh, Larry Pesavento 3 drive to a top. And so the question is going to be what happens when price gets to 1287.40. That would be Stevie's green line on the hourly time frame chart. And so there is this possibility of seeing the close below 1285. I don't know. What I do know is you've got topping signals here on an hourly time frame chart inside of gold with that bearish reversal signal. So now would not be the time to go ahead and get in or add to that position. Instead, you want to just see how the trading in gold unfolds for the uh, rest of the uh, day. At least that is my take as we speak right now. So that, it, without even going to JNUG, but I will go to the junior nugget for you. Uh, we'll just take a look at profiles and things of that. Um, what we can see out here, uh, the weekly looks like this could be a, a bullish a hammer candle out there um, and and on the weekly time frame chart let's do this for you inside the JNUG let's see if this looks like it could be a Gartley a weekly Gartley buy pattern because it looks like it could be here's your shooting star for your A point your B point was the trading day of March 4th and then a retracement into March 25th. So this has made the one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD. The price projection was 701 it got down to 705 this week like this is a hammer candle at the end of the trading session. It is right now at 145, but I don't know what it will look like uh, at the at 4 p.m. But otherwise, the uh, weekly for the junior nugget is saying, hey, you've got a Gartley buy pattern out here. So that looks pretty good. The daily is uh, formed a new profile yesterday. Price is getting inside that box, bullish in structure. What this means, and of course, depending on the close today in gold, which may affect the junior nugget, you really want to see price close above 803. If it doesn't, uh, you know, then, uh, then, then, then I'm not certain. 
This case here, you'd say, if this were the close right now, the way we'd look at it, I would say the junior nugget is at least going to bounce to 877 out here. That would be our call as we speak. So there's the look of the junior nugget, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, we're not going to pay attention to. And really in the GDX, we probably have the same thing. But let's just confirm that since you asked. Yeah, there's a hammer candle inside the GDX. Uh, it doesn't, it, it sort of has the same pattern out there. Um, on a weekly basis, and, and on the weekly basis, price held support, which was the bottom of the profile, 21.57. It really got down to 20.67 out there. So, our right, thanks for writing in. Hope that helps you out. Have a nice uh, weekend. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? We've got uh, shipments from China. Pretty sure that's not for me. And uh, we've got uh, collect your reward before it expires in 24 hours. I I'm going to get right on that. Okay, now let's go to an actual real email out there. How much junk mail do you get? Can't somebody come up and develop something so that we don't have to see that junk email? I mean, people talk about artificial intelligence. I think it's artificial. I haven't seen any real intelligence. I mean, how many, maybe I'm the only one that is inundated with junk and you get no idea where some of this stuff really comes from. I have no idea where it comes from. In any event, uh, we've got a question here from the hot dog himself, and his question is, can we look at FNV? Got uh, 100 shares. Uh, the next resistance level looks like 72 buckaroonies. Let's go take a look at uh, Franco, Franco, Nevada out here, FNV, and uh, try to help out uh, the top uh, dog. No, this is not the top dog. This is the hot dog out here. So we got a top dog in the den. We got a hot dog here by email. You got to love that. Uh, let me put an FNV on my other charts out here. And there we go. So, oh, so you're saying the next resistance looks like 72. So here's what we know. We just take a look at our market profiles. Market profiles daily would say resistance would be 7488 trading well below the bottom of its profile. The weekly would say 72.94, maybe that's your 72 bucks out there. And the uh, monthly um, you know resistance really 73.96, 72.57 is the quarterly level. So so maybe that's where your numbers are coming from. But, but however, uh, hot dog might be looking at Stevie's red line. And uh, if we take a look at uh, I'm never on those sites, Jay. Uh, 71.47 out here uh, inside of Franco Nevada, that would be your resistance level. So what what Franco Nevada did two days ago is it formed that TD setup nine count pattern, did it on day 10, uh, but that was the low. So that's a potential for a reversal. Today is a bullish reversal candle. It's that bull separation uh, line thus far. So very bullish. And uh, what you would like to see here is a close above Stevie's red line at 71.47. Uh, so that's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frame chart here. Um, certainly A to B equals CD down patterns that are saying it was completed today as long as this bull separation candle remains in effect out there. The weekly basis, we don't really have a, a bottoming signal here whatsoever. So, um, you know, does price bounce to resistance and then continues moving lower? I don't know the answer to that, but no bottoming signal yet on a, a weekly time frame inside of Franco or Franco, Nevada. So I hope that helps you out. But on a daily basis, looks like you're at least going to get more of a rally or counter trend rally uh, in it. So thanks for writing. Hope you have a, a great weekend out there. And uh, that's about it. That's all we've got. So let's see. Are there any questions inside the Tiger's Den? I think there are not. <laughs> Um, I just want to make sure because if you've got a question, I'd like to uh, I'd like to go ahead and answer it. So I don't see anything in the den. If you do have a question, though, please go ahead and either write in, give me a call eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. And uh, so what are we gonna do for this next thirty seconds out here? I'm gonna look for something fabuloso. What would that be? What would that be out here? What can what can I what knowledge can I impart on you? You know, Treasury bonds are kind of in an interesting spot right now. Treasury bonds, if we take a look at them, give me a moment. I should be able to pull this up here quickly. Here's Treasury bonds. Moving higher in dollars, moving higher in euros, moving higher today in yen, 
and uh, sideways inside of pounds. But it looks like what T-bonds want to do in the case of U.S. dollars is go ahead and bounce all the way up to 148.17. That's the top of a, a new daily profile formed at the beginning of the week. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back for our two-minute wrap in just a few minutes. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011 and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up about 11, S&P 3, NASDAQ 100 off 23. And so, you know, I think the best thing that we did today was went ahead and looked at each of those daily um, indices. And we can see that we've got uh, plenty of those uh, cash markets that are identifying the potential market tops. Um, now, the responsibility of the sellers when a market top forms is to test their strength. And the way that they test their strength is the way that you and I interpret the test of their strength is whether or not they can bust support. All stocks go up and come down and go up and come down. You know, that's just part of the game out there. The question is, as they're moving down, do they break levels of support? And so inside the ES mini, the S&P, um, which does not have a topping signal out there, if price were to close below 28.94, 50 for whatever reason, we'd say support has failed and uh, price would be continuing to pull back. In the case of the NQ, which does have a topping uh, signal out here. If price were to break below 76.26, 76 
Well, that would be telling you and I that what we have is a uh, change in trend in the Dow, which would be the first, likely the first to give us that uh, signal. That number is 26,372. And we really should be on the lookout for this. It's, it's perhaps the message of the New York Stock Exchange. And what I mean by that is the advanced decline oscillator continues to trade below zero. Even though it doesn't feel like it, and it doesn't feel like it, it's a signal to you and I that the sellers are in control. Not doing a good job, but it's two different teams out there. But it still says be cautious. But the cautiousness is um, mitigated by the mere fact, how do you like that? I use that big word there, mitigated, uh, by the fact that uh, prices are below the 50 day exponential moving average. That's 1427. And uh, just for the heck of it, what are junkyard dogs doing out here today? We'll take Take a look at JNK. It's made a higher high. It, there's still plenty of liquidity in this market. A lot of that liquidity coming from overseas, coming from Europa, and to the USA. And you're welcome. Come on over. Spend the weekend here in Florida. Hey, folks, thanks so much for being here this week. We'll look forward to seeing you Monday. Have a safe, happy weekend. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bears up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. And we'll see you on Monday. Take care.